Hi, I'm Jim with UltrasoundBorderVue.com. Today I'm going to teach you all about ultrasound artifacts. Aliasing is a phenomenon in color flow and spectral Doppler that occurs when the blood flow exceeds what the ultrasound machine can detect. As a result, the machine is unable to accurately detect the velocity and direction of blood flow. In other words, the frequency has reached its Nyquist limit. This is the stage at which aliasing and range ambiguity occur, which is equal to the pulse repetition frequency divided by 2. Doppler velocity is accurately measured when each area is sampled twice. This is what the number 2 means in the Nyquist limit equation. In this diagram, the two purple waveforms represent two Doppler samples that display an accurate spectral velocity measurement on the screen. In this diagram, the smaller purple waveform represents a single Doppler sample. Since this area was only sampled once, the ultrasound machine fails to capture the true Doppler velocity and forces the waveform to wrap around on itself, thus reaching and surpassing the Nyquist limit. A real life example of aliasing occurs when you're recording a helicopter taking off its launch pad. The rotor of the helicopter, which are the blades on top, spin in a counterclockwise fashion while the propeller blades spin in a clockwise fashion. When you're recording it, at some point, the speed of the blade spinning will exceed what the frame rates on your camera can detect. So the rotor on the helicopter will begin to look like it's starting to change direction and spin clockwise, while the propeller will look like it's spinning counterclockwise. Another example is if you're looking at a two-hand analog clock in 15-minute intervals. Let's say the time is 3 o'clock, and after 15 minutes, it's 3.15. 15 minutes from that, it's 3.30 and then 15 minutes from that is 3.45. Well, you know the minute hand on the clock is spinning in a clockwise fashion. If you're looking at that same clock in 45 minute intervals, let's say you start at 3 o'clock and you don't look at the time for another 45 minutes. Well, once 3.45 hits, well, not looking at the hour hand, you're just looking at the minute hand, your brain will trick you into thinking that the minute hand is moving counterclockwise. Now, coming back to the ultrasound world, this color bar scale that us sonographers know how fast or the limit at which we can detect velocities. Let's say that the blood flow you're looking at is 60 centimeters per second, but your color bar scale is only set at 30 centimeters per second. Every velocity above 30 will be displayed on your Doppler as a bright, turbulent, high velocity flow. The best ways of eliminating aliasing include decreasing the pulse repetition period or PRP to increase the pulse repetition frequency or PRF and the Nyquist limit. Apply a low frequency transducer to create a small Doppler shift for blood flow velocity. You can also try choosing a shallower sample volume, changing from a pulse wave to a continuous wave Doppler, increasing your Doppler angle which then decreases the Doppler shift for a given flow, or adjust your baseline shift. Lower shifts are less likely to exceed the Nyquist limit and therefore less likely to alias. Twinkling artifacts are represented as a focus of alternating colors displayed on your ultrasound screen while using color Doppler around areas that are highly reflective. These are also known as color comet tails. Twinkling is caused by inherent noise within the ultrasound scanner. These artifacts can actually be helpful for a sonographer in identifying any types of stones in the body. Some ways of eliminating this artifact include decreasing your pulse repetition frequency, decreasing your color right, placing your focus at or below the highly reflective structure, increasing your wall filter, or increasing your 2D grayscale. Ghosting artifacts will make blood appear bleeding into the surrounding tissue. This is mainly caused by the pulsation and vibration of the tissue around the Doppler. This is mainly because the movement in the tissue causes low frequency Doppler shifts, making it look like blood flow is flowing within the tissue. The best way to eliminate this artifact is increasing your wall filter. This will get rid of the low frequency Doppler shifts. Another artifact that's really close to ghosting is called flash artifacts. These are mainly caused by high respirations and if your patient is talking. This will show like intermittent flash of color around the tissue rather than like a bleeding type effect. So if you're performing a carotid artery ultrasound, you're going to see a bunch of intermittent flashes of color Doppler on your screen. Unless you can get your patient to stop talking, the best alternative is by decreasing your color gain and by moving slowly as you investigate the area. Color Doppler mirror imaging artifacts occur in the same fashion that 2D mirror imaging artifacts occur. What happens is the pulse will come down and strike the apex of the lung, which is a highly reflective oblique surface, 
From there, it will reflect off the subclavian artery. A portion of the beam will be reflected to the transducer, and another portion of the beam will be reflected back to the apex of the lung, and then back to the transducer. So the ultrasound machine will assume a longer traveling time than normal, and will displace that subclavian artery directly beneath the real subclavian artery. The crazy thing about this artifact is that if you put spectral Doppler in the artifact, you'll actually get a spectral waveform. So you have to be careful and you have to know and how to identify which one is the artifact and which one's real. These are almost impossible to get rid of other than decreasing your overall gain and using your TGCs. Spectral mirror artifacts will display a replica of your waveform directly beneath your baseline. This is because either your spectral gain is turned too high or your angle of incination is at 90 degrees or close to it. So just change your angle of incination and decrease your spectral gain and that should minimize your artifact. Near field or clutter artifacts are the result of high amplitude echoes displayed in the near field. They can mimic a thrombus in the apex when you're scanning your apical views when viewing the apical 4, 2, or 3 chamber view. These are best eliminated when using a blood enhancing agent like Optison, Lumison, or Definity, or the use of TGCs in the near field. I'm Jim with UltrasoundBoardReview.com. Thank you so much for watching. If any of you out there are about to take your SPI boards, you can email me at any time with any of your questions at UltrasoundBoardReview at gmail.com, or you can personally text or call me at 435-922-1635. I would be happy to help you with any question that you might have. Thanks for watching.